Well, some pretty significant news for college football, for the Big 12, certainly for the University of Oklahoma and for the University of Texas. I'm Ari Temke along with Michael Rockman. This is the Texas Football Orange Bloods YouTube channel. And uh, we're going to be talking about the implications of Caleb Williams and the, I, I, I guess you could say, inevitable decision to enter the transfer portal here after Oklahoma, after his freshman season. Um, so before we get into it and discuss where he could land, what Oklahoma could do at quarterback, and what this truly means for Texas, make sure to uh, give this video a thumbs up. And uh, if you're really feeling frisky, subscribe to the channel. And uh, that way you're notified when we, when, you, when we post a new video. So, all right, uh, let's start with just the, the basic part of this. It's pretty crazy, Rockman, to think about where Oklahoma was in August and where Oklahoma football is today. They were preseason number one or number two, depending on who you ask. They had a preseason high school trophy favorite at quarterback. And here we are in early 2022, and they have a new coach, brand new coaching staff for the most part. Uh, they basically lost most of their players. Um, it's pretty wild how much everything was rolling. Their recruiting class for 22 and 23 was just incredible. And obviously Lincoln now gets those kids to USC. But it's really hard to fathom this is the last kind of shoot a drop in terms of Oklahoma and big, you know, moves after the Lincoln Riley thing. And then I guess it was inevitable, but certainly admirable for Caleb Williams to finish out the season and, and, you know, do what a lot of other players wouldn't do or haven't done in the same situation. Yeah, absolutely. And really this is something that was kind of up in the air. A lot of people had speculated early on that Caleb Williams was going to enter the portal and then, it felt like there was no news on that front. So they thought totally. he's going to stick around. And now, you know, he's entered the portal and Oklahoma is really kind of left scrambling in my opinion for what they're going to do for the future because oh, they Venables are isn't here to just right now. And that, actually, so that's where I want to leave you next. So Rockman, you definitely specialize in the portal, the transfer portal. It's a, a big piece of what you're doing here at Orange Bloods. So like, who's, I mean, they're, they're, I remember a lot of big name quarterbacks going into the portal. A lot of them have found homes already. Slovis, Keith Slovis was hit now. I mean, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Obviously, Spets rather with South, South Carolina. But, I mean, who – are you a believer in the kid from Incarnate Ward, uh, Cameron Ward? Yeah, Cameron Ward has a lot of potential. I think if I were to make a comparison to an FBS quarterback, I think there's a lot of K.J. Jefferson in this game where he's an athlete. He's phenomenal with his legs. He's got so much size that he's impossible to really kind of take down just one-on-one. -on -one but there's still a lot of refinement needed in his passing game. Uh, you know, there's some options though out there. Harrison Bailey at Tennessee is a guy that I think is going to get a lot of attention and could very well be a guy that maybe star. Oklahoma looks for. Yeah. Former five-star guy that even Sarkeesian was very high on as a recruit. Um, you know, there's Casey Thompson, who's still very much wide, wide out there. Charles Thompson is his dad very much uh, has a little bit of a connection there, I think. So maybe he could ring up a few people. And then you're looking at that Georgia quarterback room, you know, with JT Daniels, Stetson Bennett, Carson Beck. There's plenty of guys that could very easily transfer out from there, um, especially with some of the rumors that Caleb Williams seems to be looking like he could be a Georgia Bulldog next year. If he lands there, that's three guys that could very easily enter the portal. Uh, Jackson Dart at USC if Caleb Williams goes there. So we could see a lot of kind of blowback from this Williams move that could impact Oklahoma's search for the QB. And, and so Oklahoma at this point, I mean, it's incredible how bare their quarterback room is considering where Lincoln Riley had it versus where it is right now. He had the preseason high school trophy for front runner, the number one recruit in the nation, Caleb Williams behind him. He had the num number one in the 2024 class coming in, who's now going to USC. Nick Evers, I think he's a four-star recruit who committed to Florida, decommitted, and now, now committed to Oklahoma. But and I think even he committed or uh, admitted in a recent interview, like he's not in any position to start. So. I mean, they're definitely going to be looking at the transfer portal for a, a one-year Band-Aid. And, it, you know, again, it's just uh, – it's incredibly interesting. It's, it's, it's really 180 degrees from where they were. I mean, it really is – you think about where Texas was in relation to Oklahoma with what Lincoln Riley had, the trajectory of the program, and everything else. And, man, it just – I mean, it just came crashing down and quickly. I mean, it, it's really incredible. This obviously has major implications for Texas. And look, he still he still could very well come back. It just doesn't seem likely. Um, I mean, and obviously the most likely situation here is everybody thinks he's going to go to USC, right? 
Yeah, I think the two schools that have been rumored the most is USC Trojans back with Lincoln Riley and the Georgia Bulldogs. And really, I've heard Bulldogs are kind of the leader on that forefront just because of the fact that they have the it. SEC talent, they have the contending ability, and really, you know, obviously Stetson Ben has done the job, but I think there is a kind of agreed upon sense that they need a QB to kind of take them over the top. This championship could obviously I, change I some things, hate. but... I would hate to see Caleb Blake with Kirby Smart. I would hate to because he Kirby doesn't want to throw the ball on the field like like Caleb Williams does. He takes way too. He's not just letting you throw throw up you know go routes. <laughs> just throw them up yeah. there. <laughs> but I mean, look, you know, we saw it with the playoff uh, Alabama and Georgia. Their roster, if you look at it, pay attention to the blue chip ratio from Bud Elliott. Their, their rosters are eighty percent four and five star recruits. So. You know, I mean, it's not a coincidence that they're playing for the national championship. They're far away above everybody else uh, in terms of competition. They just had that much talent. So that makes sense that Caleb Williams would be late there. Um, would you want – like, do people want him to go to USC? Would, would that be would, – would, would people be happier with him going elsewhere and not following Lincoln? Or what's the take? What do you, what's, what's the feeling there? I think a lot of people have kind of it, – it's very split. I think Oklahoma fans would hate to see yeah. Caleb Williams head over to USC because – they just feel like Lincoln Riley's kind of stolen everything. But I think for a lot of college football, they want to see Lincoln Riley kind of get going because his offense is one of the most fun in college football. And when he has his guys in place, then that's when you can really see it at his highest productivity. And Caleb Williams is obviously going to bring that. Obviously, as a true freshman, he had his flaws. He had his issues to overcome, but he was still very exciting. And I think with another year in Lincoln Riley's system, he could absolutely flourish. Yeah, I mean, he put together career highlight tape against Texas, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're right. I mean, once defense coordinators have a little bit of film on him, they adjusted. And, but you expect that. As a true freshman, the way that he played this year was, was phenomenal considering the circumstances. And, I, you know, Lincoln's not one to trust a lot of quarterbacks, especially for true freshmen. You know, he, I think he takes a lot from him to trust a quarterback enough to go to him. The fact that he went to him, especially given the circumstance surrounding Rattler and all of the stuff going on there. And, you know, he's yelling at fans who are booing or calling for Caleb Williams of the season and stuff like that. You know, like, I, I think that speaks to his ability and his, his potential. And, you know, I have a ton of respect for him. I mean, I, I, I staying in Oklahoma, leaving, going elsewhere, leave, you know, leaving right away. What you, you do whatever's in your best self-interest, but you got a lot of respect for a guy that didn't automatically leave and just 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 leave like a lot of other players did um, and to stick it out and to finish the season and finish it strong the way that he did play as well as he did in the Alamo Bowl. Um, you know, I mean, that, it's hard not to have a lot of respect for him uh, moving forward. And, and the other thing, too, Rockman, is like there was a bunch of guys that entered the portal or talked about entering the portal in the immediate aftermath of Lincoln leaving. Some of those guys pulled back, including Caleb, obviously. I wonder what, you know, the, the if, if this is the, the death knell of some of those other guys making their decisions here. And this is basically Oklahoma and Brett Venable starting from scratch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's already rumors of Mario Williams having cleared out his dorm room from some people that live in the same dorm area. And then there's talks of Marvin Mims still entering the portal as well. So this offense could really kind of be completely flushed in talent and restart. And Hazel was in the portal, right? Area. Yeah, he committed to Arkansas already. Right. Stockner left to South Carolina as well. So there are Stockner plenty of South pieces Carolina, that are yeah. not going to be returning for the Sooners this year. Theo Weiss, is he still there? Is he in the portal probably? He's in the portal, but I, I believe he has talked about recommitting to Oklahoma. I'm not sure if anything's official come out, and maybe this could kind of sway him back to looking at his options. But there's plenty of pieces, at least floating around, that could very well end up elsewhere for next season. All right, that's Michael Rockman. I'm Ari Temkin. Uh, you can catch the great work here at uh, Orange Bloods by subscribing to the channel and uh, check out Sirius XM, Big 12 Radio from 7 to 10 a.m. Central uh, on Channel 375 or on ESP Radio as well, where you can uh, check out what I do. But for now, we're out. Peace. Peace.